Today we're going to build an Arduino countdown timer with manual time selection and servo control. We're going to set the time, watch it count down, and see the servo move when it hits zero. In today's video we'll use Arduino Mega R3, a 4 digit 7 segment display, the MG995 servo motor, a breadboard, the 74HC595 shift register, two push buttons, a rotary encoder, a DC power connector, four 220 ohm resistors, two 10k ohm resistors, and some male to male and male to female jumper wires. The setup for this video uses a very similar setup as we used in the how to build a digital timer video, except we removed one of the three buttons, we added a rotary encoder module, a servo motor, and we switched from an Uno board to an Arduino Mega board. This is a diagram of what we're working with today, and I'll occasionally zoom in on different areas of the diagram because it's kind of hard to see otherwise. I'm not going to say too much about the 4 digit display or the 595 shift register because I did in the previous video. I encourage you to check it out, check the description for a link. But what I'd like to talk about is the rotary encoder and how it works. A rotary encoder is a type of position sensor that converts the angular position or motion of a shaft to an output signal. They're commonly found in applications like volume knobs on radios, printers, and various robotic applications. There are two types of rotary encoders, and the first type is the incremental encoder, which we'll be using today. And these encoders report the amount of movement in increments rather than an absolute position. It provides two signals, usually referred to as A and B, that are 90 degrees out of phase, and that allows you to determine both the direction and the amount of rotation. The term out of phase refers to the relationship between two waveforms when they don't perfectly align, and when the signals are 90 degrees out of phase, as in the case with these rotary encoders, it just means that when one signal reaches its peak value, the other signal is at zero. In the context of rotary encoders, the two output signals, A and B, they're generated as the knob is turned. A leads B when the knob rotates in one direction, and you'll see signal A go high before signal B, and if B leads A when the knob is rotated in the opposite direction, then you'll see signal B go high before signal A. So being out of phase is very important for rotary encoders because it enables detection of rotational direction through the timing of the signal changes. And because rotary encoders operate this way, they're very effective in projects that require precise position feedback and control. There are also absolute encoders that provide a unique output for each position, and they maintain a position value even when the power is turned off. Our rotary encoder module has five pins. The G and D pin is connected to Arduino ground. The plus pin or the VCC pin is connected to five volt. The CLK pin is connected to a digital pin. And for us, that'll be pin 22. The DT pin is connected to another digital pin. And for us, that'll be pin 23 on the Arduino Mega. And the SW pin is used if you want to utilize the push button function. And you connect that to a digital pin as well. For us, it's going to be pin 24. Since we're talking about the rotary encoder, let's go to the Arduino sketch and take a look at what we've added. This section defines which digital pins on the Arduino are connected to the rotary encoder's CLK and DT outputs. As you can see, it's Arduino pin 22 for the CLK and 23 for DT. Up here in the button section, I included the encoder SW at pin 24 on the Arduino. We're going to use that pin for the reset button. Here we have some integer, boolean, and unsigned long variable declarations. We use the countdown time variable to store the time set by the rotary encoder, which can be adjusted. The current time variable keeps track of the current countdown value. The last set time variable holds the last value set by the encoder for resets. Is running, that one indicates if the countdown timer is currently running. And the is paused variable indicates if the timer is paused. The last debounce time is used to help manage debouncing by tracking the last time the encoder state was changed. Then we have debounce delay. That one sets the time delay for debouncing to prevent noise. And the last encoder state variable stores the last state of the rotary encoder for comparison to detect changes. In the setup function, uh, this section sets the encoder CLK and the encoder DT pins as input pins with pull-up resistors. And this just makes sure that the pins read high when the encoder is not turned. It also initializes the last encoder state variable by reading the current state of the encoder CLK pin. Now we're in the loop and the handler encoder function reads the current state of the rotary encoder CLK and DT pins. It checks if the state of the encoder CLK has changed since the last loop iteration. And if there's a change and enough time has passed to avoid noise, it determines the direction of the rotation. So if the DT state is different from the current state of CLK, it decreases the countdown time, which indicates clockwise rotation. 
Now if they're the same, it increases the countdown time and that indicates counterclockwise rotation. It also ensures that countdown time stays within 1 to 600 seconds and updates the current time and last set time variables. And finally, it updates the last encoder state variable to track the last state for future comparisons. The servo motor has three pins. The red and brown pin are connected to 5 volt and ground of the breadboard. The signal pin is the yellow pin or orange pin and it's connected to pin 12 of the Arduino. Once the timer hits zero, the servo motor is activated, then I use the rotary encoder button to reset it to the previous time I set, just like that. If we look back at the code for the servo, we include the servo library, and this line, this creates a servo object named my servo. Now we'll scroll down to the setup here. Now this line, this attaches a servo object to pin 12 on the Arduino, and this pin will send control signals to the servo motor. This initializes the servo position to zero degrees, and that sets the servo to its initial starting position. In the loop section, we'll take a quick look at handling the countdown and servo movement. Now, this function is responsible for updating the countdown timer every thousand milliseconds or every second. And when the countdown reaches zero, the myservo.write90 will move the servo 90 degrees. Now this section handles the encoder switch for resetting the timer and servo position. This function checks the state of the encoder switch, which is connected to the encoder SW pin. If the switch is pressed and it takes it to a low state, it resets the countdown and the servo position. The myservo.write0 line will reset the servo back to 0 degrees or whatever your starting position is when the countdown is reset. This is just an example of how to set the servo's initial position and then move the servo when the countdown reaches 0. For me in this video it's 90 degrees. You can set it at whatever position you want and then reset it when the encoder switch is pressed. It's kind of hard to record this 4 digit display without it blinking, but to me it looks like it's burning bright. This second button here will stop and resume the countdown, but if I press the first button, that only starts it, so it does nothing in the middle of the countdown. I have to press the second button to resume. Be sure to check out my first video on how to build a digital timer with Arduino in a 7 segment display. And if you're interested in any other variations of this setup, just let me know in the comments. I have found that you guys usually have the best ideas for videos going forward. I'll also add lots of comments to the code and post it to Facebook. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, be sure to like the video by clicking the thumbs up. Also share it with somebody else who can benefit from it. And consider subscribing if you enjoy this type of stuff. And I'll see you again with another video.